There is so much to go over. This is going to be a mega news video. There is some crazy stories at the end. Some ones I have some questions on. I don't need to ask you about it. And because I'll be curious your thoughts and opinions on something. Because I think people are assuming like the death of board games. So like we'll, we'll talk through all that. But we also have some really hot items right now available via crowdfunding that I want to go over as well. All right, first off, a last warning on this. Rogue Angels, their campaign is about to end. They went over $100,000, which is great for an indie game, I feel. This is very much Mass Effect, the board game, in a lot of senses. I know they they mention that, but it's not, I mean, it's not exactly Mass Effect, of course, but there is a lot of that kind of feel where you're talking to NPCs, NPCs and you're going through kind of a, a sleek sci-fi world and stuff like that. Very, very cool game. I love the level up system on it. I actually have a review on this. I'm going to link it down in the description below. Feel free to check it out before you back, of course, if you want. But yeah, last 23 hours and really happy to see them be successful here. I think that's awesome. So uh, yeah, anyway, a lot of different missions to go through. I didn't even get through, a, I mean, I went through quite a few, but my goodness, is it a big game? There's a lot to go over. So uh, yeah, anyway, but it says uh, 60 minutes, 60 to 120 minutes a mission, and there are a ton of missions, which is really great. All right, next up, we also have the Shivers expansion, Triple Terror. This is wild. Over 130,000 raised, 1,200 backers. Obviously, that's still raising. They are pretty new here right now. It was 32 days still to go. This is their second one. They did the Shivers a long time ago, and I covered it back then. But you probably don't even remember it until I show you. So you might recall this right here, this like little pop-up book style game that they have. Very, very interesting. These are story cards and stuff like that. I'll tell you a little bit how that works, just to remind you a little bit, because it's been so long since it's come out, but this is essentially, uh, I think, two expansions here. Uh, you can get, or this is Triple Terra, so three new expansions, not two, I apologize. You have the Deadly Dungeon, you have the Ominous Observatory, and you have the Fogmore Museum. And then you can put that into the whole manor because they like magnetically like attach to each other. These are the story cards, so you actually slot that in. I'll show you that at the end as well. And you have all these like standees, which are your cards, your people, and you know who you're going against, stuff like that. You even get a magnifying glass because you're like searching the room for clues and stuff. It's pretty wild uh, and uh, very different in how you normally do it. They do have a limited supply of the original one, only 200. There's still plenty left though, but just as an FYI, which is also kind of interesting to see that this is just people who did end up buying it want more of it, which is very cool to see. But it also means that they're still struggling to kind of show what makes this game so different, I guess. Uh, so like here's some of the rooms that you can see there's one larger one there and you can see kind of where they might attach to each other and stuff as well. But you're literally just like looking for clues and marking your inventory with these dry erase things and stuff like that. You get a few dice and some manuals and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's pretty crazy. So they're unlocking stretch goals, which is cool as well. I'm gonna scroll past all of this just to show you a little bit. Yeah, so see you have like a little, uh, there's a banana in there or whatever, right? But there might not always be a banana in there. In fact, there might be nothing in there. It just depends on how, like your story that you're doing. You can even like be like, oh, that item, I have that item now and stuff like that, which is really cool to see. Um, it, they'll probably show, I think the, the actual story modularity in there. Yeah, right here. So see, so you actually saw that and those are the items that fit into the various, uh, you know, parts of that room, if that makes sense. Very interesting idea. Definitely different than anything else on the market for sure. I mean, that is pretty unique. So if you have a big collection, maybe kind of like mine, and you are interested in something new and different, this is definitely it. It looks like it has a small footprint too, which is kind of nice. All right, following that we have Founders. I've been showing this off leading up to the campaign. Now it's actually here, nine days to go, 54,000 raised. It's a, and it even says this, it's a Hidden Alliance tile laying game. It's kind of interesting because the ice ice mechanic on here, the ice like melts and eventually goes away. So the map itself is changing a lot as you're laying tiles down, which I think is very cool as you kind of like go into the ice and eventually all the ice is gone. So I think that's pretty neat. I think that's a neat idea. They also have some like a sleeved card design stuff where you slot it in and do different things like that. So definitely is gonna be playing different than a lot of your other games when it comes to that as well. But there's only very few, I feel, compared to what I think the potential is to do sleeve slotting in of cards and stuff like that. A lot of companies use like stickers on top of cards, stuff like that, but a sleeve solves a lot of that problem. I first got that with Hate from Come On, but since then there's been other games that have done that a lot. And I think there was a few before Hate as well, but either way, I love the mechanic. I think that's great. It's reusable. It, it, it inherently can do a whole bunch of different interesting things and you have sleeved cards. So it's like a win, win, win across the board. I'd like to see more companies doing that. I think that's awesome. 
This one, by the way, will cost you a whopping 38 bucks for the standard edition. Now, there is an interesting thing before I move off from this. So the standard edition, that's awesome. You get the game, 38 bucks. That's a great price, I feel. That's that's really nice. That's For this kind of game, I dig it. I think that's awesome. And you get quite a bit there. As you can see, the collector's edition jumps up to 89 euro, which is really about uh, $95. And they skip the founder's one. I think that's um, I think that's a smart move as well. So as you can see here, you're going to get metallic coins and, you know, really nice tokens and a velvet bag and another metallic coin here and stuff like that. UV spots on like everything, which is cool. They have two different expansions. You can think of it kind of like a Dune Imperium style expansion where it, like adds to the map and does new things to it. In this case, as you can see, it's literally like, here's the map extended and stuff like that so you have this expansion you have this one that do different things this one adds a whole bunch of like legacy envelopes and stuff very cool expansions i think it definitely adds to the game but the reason that this 69 isn't so much because it's only 74 so 74 to 95 i don't feel is that much of a price increase to get the nice premium edition i think that's why they kind of push for that it's like it, it, it's it, i think it's priced pretty well compared to the expansion obviously it's a lot more than the base 38 dollars one but uh honestly if you're going to go into it i think that's probably the way to go Next up, we have Final Girl Series 3. 1.2 million raised, 6,800 backers, and still 13 days to go. So plenty of time to go. That is impressive. The uh, uh, amount that Final Girl continues to be uh, popularized and enjoyed by people and uh, successful is impressive and shows how much the game actually is, like how good it is. People obviously love it. I think that's great. They do, it is, it's interesting because it's both cheap and expensive. Um, and, and, and it depends on what you're wanting. Really, for the Kickstarter, you're wanting to go all in. Now, I know that's said a lot, but I'm going to kind of explain why price-wise. I talked to a lot of you guys, and a lot of you guys said that, well, normally it's like 20, 25 bucks, I believe, for like each individual uh, film, feature film, which is, again, a great uh, theme around here, that uh, you... You can get them cheaper at retail, or around 16 bucks or so often. And there's no shipping, obviously. There's sales, stuff like that. So if you're just wanting some, wait for retail. If you want this, though, this 179 for the whole series that comes in its own big box that has them all slotted here and has all your stuff here and stuff like that, then this is, and has all the minis and stuff, this is actually a great way to go. So if you're wanting to do that, that's what you want. And honestly, it's not like it's marked up or down, which is both good and bad. Um, the other two series, uh, so series one and series two, also have a 179 big box thing. So you get all three of them for 179 each, which means, yeah, you can spend quite a bit. This is, again, three campaigns in one, more or less. So you can see here that the Series 3 Ultimate, 179 versus $20 for like a single one, um, which I think is great, honestly. I mean, I think this is probably actually a really good deal to get all that. And you can get the Ultimate Collection, 549. That gets you all three of the main Series ones, right? So that's really cool. There's one other thing I want to note before we move on from this, and that's their... Uh, Christmas one, which I think I probably scrolled over. So let me scroll back up. So the Christmas one is going to actually come out early. It's going to be in time for Christmas here, which is, I think, super cool that they did that. Yeah, special feature here, the North Pole Nightmare. This will actually deliver early, and I think that's great. I mean, that's really cool. Just have a quick turnaround like that and actually get it there. And not only that, but notice the price is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. The more it's funded, the cheaper it goes. I love seeing that. There's a few other websites that do that, and I think it's a great idea. One of the nice things about that is it's practical, right? Because you're able to order more bulk, things become cheaper, and you're able to work that out. So you're able to get more people in because it's cheaper and more and more and more, and ideally the funding keeps going. You have to balance the cheaper with the more, of course, and stuff like that. But either way, I think it's a nice way to do that. Or if nothing else, your profits are now paying for this, essentially. And it doesn't increase scope at all, which is really nice too. It's not like a traditional stretch goal where you're just adding more and more and more on top of it. I know that gets uh, some companies into trouble depending on how their stretch goals work. So I like that. Next up, we have League of Engineers expansion and second print doing very well at $411,000 raised, 3,000 plus backers doing extremely well. 
before I called this essentially Warhammer Quest, and while yes, technically it's very much in that same vein, that same genre, uh, there's more to it than that. And you guys let me know, and I think that's important. I think one of the things, I mean, it, it, these kind of games are really deep, so I can't go too much into there. However, one of the nice things that I can say that I think will uh, a lot of people will dig in is actually mentioned right here. You have four species and eight professions to choose from, choose between, and over 100 talents and perks to add to your characters as they level up. This is an RPG experience. Experience. And that's exactly what that kind of tells you. A classic RPG experience. You can tell by the art style, by the theme of the game, by a, a lot of things that if, if you have some great memories of like really chunky RPG board games, this is something you want to be interested in. As you can see, it has a ton here. In fact, this doesn't show it off even very well because everything's nicely stacked and kind of really compressed here. There's a ton here. So feel free to take a look at it, see if this is right for you. But yeah, if you want some of that classic style RPG board game goodness, this is the new hotness, I feel. And I think that's awesome. I'm glad that they're still making them. All right, next up we have Aberration. They did one of the craziest, weirdest things I've ever seen done, and it actually worked. They're at 99,000 race, 476 backers, and I'm just gonna scroll down. It's 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 essentially it's a round board. I know some of you aren't gonna like that, but it's a uh, tower defense style game slash worker placement style thing, right? They have some bag building here too as well. Um, it's really cool. I like that the fact that there are paths and stuff like that. I think that's nice. And then you have your center location. Very normal stuff there. They do have minis, but only like 19 minis. So they're they're like there's not a whole lot. A lot of these kind of games do hordes, right? There's a whole lot of guys coming. This one, there are 19 miniatures. So this is an FYI um, that it's not like super miniature heavy. And I think that was part of the problem with this is it seems expensive for what you get. At least they don't show it very well. See, like this is actually pretty impressive, but they don't show very well that uh, there's a, you're getting a lot. Hopefully that makes sense. If we scroll down here, we're going to see some of the prices. Oh, oh, this. Guys, listen, I have wanted my Swan Dragon ever since uh, Into the Unknown decided to show that off for Kings Forlorn and then not give it to me. I want my <laughs> my Swan Dragon. And now other companies are getting there. This is like a Swan Hydra, and I think it's amazing. Or like a Goose Hydra, I guess. But either way, amazing. Honk of Doom. Love it. Okay, so moving on from that. You see here that the Deluxe Pledge 149, that adds all this kind of stuff. Whereas the standard edition without that is about 79. And then you have the standard edition plus expansion for about 99. I think those are fairly good. Um, this one starts getting a little bit pricey. The, the tokens and stuff are nice. So a lot of them are just repeated. Uh, it's just 132 uh, ability tokens, 19 miniatures, stuff like that. It's okay, but 150 bucks, that's getting pretty expensive. And I know things are more expensive these days. Everything seems to be. And we're, it's like the, the economy is just in shambles. But, but... <laughs> Um, that used to be more expensive. In fact, if you go here, they actually dropped the price by 30 bucks each. It was 179 for the Lux Edition, which 180 I think was way too much. So dropping it down to 150 is definitely better. And not only that, they were waiting for GameFound to do it, and the GameFound didn't do it right away, but they did do it. Mid-campaign, they dropped the price. Interesting to see. I wonder if there's a future for that. I just showed that other one, right, where the expansion was getting cheaper. I wonder if GameFound eventually will be able to support this long term, where if you want to have your stretch goals be a cheaper price as more backers show up, in other words, the quantity of people drives the price more than just how much money you're raising, that might be something that they can do. Let me know in the comments below if you think that's a good idea. I think there's definitely some potential there to make things cheaper for everybody and have that be incentive versus just you know, the uh, inherently throw more stuff on the stretch goals or take stuff out and then slowly reveal them, right? I don't know. I think it's interesting. It's at least another tool in the pocket of creators should they choose to go that way. I think it's a neat idea and I'd like to see it more often. Now, why they changed this price though is interesting because it wasn't the amount of people backing it. It says here, we've shifted our approach and are removing these tooling costs, the tooling costs of the miniatures from our miniature pricing for aberration. I, that's interesting, right? So that's the most expensive part of miniatures. Making the steel mold, that's expensive. That's thousands of dollars. And then printing them out is pennies, right? So you can print 10,000 plus of them out easily, depending on the metal you choose and stuff like that. There's multiple you can choose from anyway. But the point is thousands upfront cost, 
very cheap to deliver. So as more people buy that, they essentially pay off the tooling. It says here, we've now made all of these visible in the main page so you can check out the planned stretch goals as well. So before, again, they had these stretch goals that they were revealing slowly. And that again, makes it to where it doesn't seem like as good of a deal versus if you show that up front. So again, it's one of those things where I think that can help incentivize, you know, a cheaper price being that instead of revealing content slowly because you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot by hiding content that people will find out eventually. So I think that's a smart decision on this one. I think that taking tooling out is a dangerous thing. They said here, we've built a solid foundation over many years. I, th as far as I know, they're a new company, so I don't know what they're talking about there, but I hopefully they know what they're talking about. That seems kind of scary though. All right, next up, we have Dragon Eclipse for Awakened Realms, over 2 million raised. So congrats on that, Awakened Realms, 13,000 plus backers doing very, very well. You guys, guys, you guys kind of know my opinion on the art, so I'm not going to go too much over that. I definitely prefer the standee art versus the miniature sculpt design. Uh, but otherwise, this is doing very well. They keep revealing new guys out, so and all their designs look great. I'm sure if you like the miniatures, those look good. If you like the uh, style of the art, those are looking stellar, of course, as well. So uh, either way, you're kind of happy with that, which I think is, in, in a way, kind of a perfect situation, right? If you're making people happy in either one. Uh, for their... Uh, stretch goals. They're doing a great job on this. It's every few days. It's not every day, but the stretch goals they have are exciting and big and make people want to actually like talk about it. Traditionally in the past, you recall, they would unlock these piece by piece. So uh, we'd unlock the card here and then we'd unlock the ability cards here and then the miniature here and stuff like that. They used to do that a lot. And now they're doing this thing where you just get, boom, here's everything, this mini plus all the cards. Or even like this whole uh, uh, scenario expansion thing, which by the way, the art on this one looks, I love that art. That looks so freaking good. But it's like, boom, here's the story. Here's the scenario. Here's all this stuff all in one package. I think they're doing a very good job with that. So it's every few days now, but it's a lot. And so every time you announce one, people get excited, talk about it, want to share it. I think that's great. That's super smart. Just as a reminder on the rewards, how much it costs, uh, the, the base pledge, the standard edition that comes with the main game, the stretch goals, and a, the few other things as well, right? I mean, it's a pretty big pledge, 55. So that's actually really good. 120, which again is already cheaper than that other one, gets you all of that and like the miniatures and stuff. So like super fancy there. And if you want everything, 184, under 200 for the collector's edition, fantastic deal. I think they're doing very good on the pricing of this for sure. And it just, again, it looks gorgeous. So there's that too. So again, all this is linked down in the description below, of course. I didn't mention that before, but totally is Beast Shattered Isles. Expansion to Beast, 3,300 uh, backers, $546,000 raised, doing very good. Still 15 days left. So again, very good there. Um, if you don't know, obviously they have some expansions here, the Shattered Isles, Great Hunt, and then of course a Beast as well. They're also adding miniatures here as well. So they did have standees, and now they're adding acrylic standees and minis, which look great, I think, as well. I like the new ones that I'm seeing. Uh, so hidden movement, card drafting, one versus mini, right? Those are kind of the big things here. And I think it does each one pretty well, from what I can tell. I've not played it, but it does look like they're doing a pretty good job on it. They talk a lot with the new things that are coming out, which I think is great. They're doing a good job telling you about it. Like if you scroll down here to the new stuff, I'm gonna scroll past all the rewards here. Ton of add-ons. You could, you could spin out the wazoo on this thing. Stretch goals look interesting, of course. But they're showing off the new content really, really well. So it's like, oh, hey, here's this new mini. And they have false movement or they have false movement cards. They can do a soul charge thing. Or then you have, uh, you know, a guy that can overload cards or one that has this grapple hook that can like bring things over, bring things to and stuff like that. Like it's really cool to see them showing off so much gameplay and it shows where the focus is, which I think is great. Price-wise, there's a lot of pledges and I tend not to like this. They have uh, a lot that are just, yeah, I, I just I just think this is this is all over the place and there's just too much here um, that I, I think is uh, a little confusing for most people. Suffice it to say, you get all three, 128.97. That's, that's kind of the big thing there where you get all the new stuff, but of course you can get the standard edition of each one or you can get, anyway, it, it, it's, there's a lot. Uh, to, to navigate there. I'm not gonna go over the whole thing. It'll almost be a dedicated video. Uh, probably the one suggestion I'd have is try and simplify maybe a little bit because that, that gets to be a lot. Next up we have Cretaceous, <laughs> I, I hope I'm saying that right, Rails. This is, think of it like Ticket to Ride, 
Jurassic Park edition, <laughs> right? Um, where it, it, it actually looks kind of cool. Uh, so you, you're essentially building out this track and you're trying to like bring these tourists and see these dinosaurs. And I think that's a great, interesting thing that they're doing. They have a, like an action system where you're, you know, seeing what action you're doing and a few other things at play. You're like building different things and whatnot. It looks like a cool game. I'm not gonna get too into it. The one thing I will say is I don't like this picture. While it looks cool and there's a lot of nice minis there and stuff like that, it also looks kind of hard to maybe see everything on the board because it gets so busy because you have like the trees and then you have, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what is behind this dinosaur here? Is there, is there a thing here? I can't tell, like, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of hides the visibility of it maybe slightly too much for my take. I think it's cool. Everything's premium. There's no stretch goals. Everything's up front for it. I like that. I actually really like the art. I think it looks Really, really great, family friendly. It looks like a fun theme that I think kids and adults can enjoy, which is cool. They do have a ton of different minis. I mean, they're not like fancy, fancy super minis, but they're pretty cool. I dig that. Um, so it looks nice. You know, you get all your chords. See, there's the action tiles I was talking about a little bit, but you tend to have kind of tokens everywhere on every you have them on cards you have them on here you have them below on the board like you're kind of putting things everywhere and i guess my only problem about that is it seems like it might take a bit to set up and tear down maybe not even set up but tear down seems like there's going to be a lot of stuff everywhere so there you are setting them up on cards and stuff too um but it also looks like a pretty neat game. So anyway, they have raised 78,000 and they have 670 a backer. Still 24 days ago, still quite a bit. And it'll cost you about 79 bucks or if you want the crowdfunding exclusive edition, in other words, a fancy edition that they're showing off and it's about 109. And you do get quite a bit there. So that is pretty cool. Next up. Update time. Ancient Blood, the Order of Vampire Hunters. You might not even remember this. However, they do are they are now showing the miniatures, and I think those look good. They actually have sculpted bases slightly, which is nice to see. It's not like a huge amount, but it's not a flat base either, which I appreciate. I think that's kind of nice. I'd like to see a little bit of a deeper groove in there, just so a wash of paint shows up a little bit nicer on it. But as you can see, pretty nice minis. They do also mention the zombie horde. I've shown that out a few times. One thing to note here is that the campaign hasn't started yet and it won't start until Agent Blood is finished. And I think that's really cool. Now, I don't know what finished means. I don't know if that means delivered or not. However, it is nice to see that they're waiting more on that later. Except the Witcher Path of Destiny. There is actually a box right there I'm going to unbox for you. So you guys get to see that in detail. I will show that off. So subscribe if you haven't already to see that. I know most of you have not subscribed and it definitely helps the channel out. It helps you out as well. So you get to see stuff like coverage of this coming up. Uh, I'm excited for it because I love the stories in The Witcher. I think that's really great. You get some really cool gray areas and stuff like that. And I, it just uh, I think it's a smart thing to focus on. They had the old world before this is by go on board and that was much more like combat focused this is much more story focused in fact there's like no combat so <laughs> kind of interesting to see that'll be launching october 19th so very very soon we'll get a review out for you guys though so you guys will be able to see that as well now can you use these well the license holders say no because they're in two different timetables the path of destiny takes place during the time of like Geralt and company and the old world obviously beforehand right However, they fully admit, guess what? This is not app-driven, which means you can put minis in whatever. You guys can make your unofficial, you know, player boards. You can you guys do whatever you want. So if you have both, you can totally do that on your own. They also mentioned uh, the retail thing. So if you didn't know, a lot of people didn't get their copy of the Old World before retail. And that's, it is kind of a hard thing to do because distribution can take a long time to do. And... P retail isn't just going to hold stuff in some magical warehouse that they have. If they have the game, they're going to want to sell the game. So it's going to be on their shelves, right? So what they're doing here is retail shipments will be sent out to partners six weeks after the departure of the game found copies. Now, six weeks is a pretty good buffer. I don't think it'll be perfect. There'll still be a few oddball, you know, like when it comes to delivery of these global games, it can take so long to make sure every little bit is done, especially when suddenly packages don't deliver and they need a new one sent and whatever. Like there's all that kind of stuff. But I think it's great that they're learning from that. I think it's great that they're really trying to make sure that, hey, guess what? You guys will get your games first. I think that's awesome. So, but also again, it will be at retail. So if you don't want to support the campaign too much, you always can wait for retail. Totally possible. 
I don't know if they're upfront about that. Game Fold, the first folding table designed for gaming. Uh, this is by Tanner Yarrow. They've done a lot of other interesting campaigns before this. I'm uh, I'm more on board with this than uh, originally because this preview shows it really nice. Now, I actually have a nice comment here about it um, that I'll kind of mention briefly, but I was worried about the fact that there are only legs on either side. But as you can see here, the supports go all the way to the middle. In fact, they show them sitting on it, which is great. So I was worried that the middle wasn't gonna have a whole lot. So if somebody leans over, a lot of people will lean to reach or just lean down on the table or something like that. Anytime you have a table, they're gonna wanna do that. And a lot of these folding tables get weak in the middle because obviously there's just really a hinge there. So seeing those supports go all the way to the middle, very nice to see. And it helps distribute the weight up a little bit more. So yeah, I mean, obviously uh, there's a lot of nice features. See, there he is sitting on there. They also do have a, a well, so that's nice for like gaming and stuff like that. Dice can kind of go in there kind of nice. So they're showing it off, I think very well. They're doing a good job with that. You can't put two together to make six by six. That's probably too big for most people, but if you need the space, it's definitely there. And for some of these big board games, that's definitely helpful. So it's great to see all the different things. They also have three rails. They have the rail on top, they have the rail inside, and they have the rail outside. And you can actually slide the rails around. In fact, they show this at one point where you can actually like slide this through the corners even. So if you roll dice and want to then pass it on to the next person, you can totally do that, which is pretty neat. Like they've really thought this through in a lot of ways, which I think is really cool. There, right there, look at that, look at that. Freaking sweet, freaking sweet. So let's go and look at prices a little bit. So you can see right here, $250 for the table or $389. And then you get six shelves, six cup holders, six small trays. So you get all the, essentially everything you would normally get on like a fancy game table where you'd start adding the things and you're spending thousands, you can spend 400 and get it, which is pretty nice. And shipping will be way less too, obviously. Or you can have the game fold table plus with topper. So you actually do have a topper. They don't show that off yet but you can kind of see it right there, 539. And now suddenly you can even save stuff there. Now I don't think the well is very big. So I doubt you're gonna be storing any miniature games on there. I don't know that they didn't, I, as far as I could tell, they haven't really shown the well depth yet. So it'd be interesting to see um, how deep of a well that is. But that's one thing to keep in mind. If you have card games or even stuff with meeples, typically that'll work, but otherwise it, it, it needs to be pretty deep to hold minis, obviously. Anyway, it looks pretty cool to me. Um, the only thing I was concerned about is Warhammer has a four by six need, and that's just one foot more. So the three foot is just not quite enough, but for getting four feet wide can be very hard for a lot of people. Even most dining tables that people own aren't quite four feet wide. So you can get the length, but the, the, the width is kind of the hard part. So I've seen people do it on the islands. I've seen people just get a big board and place it on there to get the four feet. And ideally even have a little bit more. I wonder if you can extend the table eventually by doing this and getting rid of the rail system. Anyway, I decided to mention that to them as just a, hey, guess what? This is a big problem a lot of people have. Might be of interest to you. But either way, uh, definitely this will help out a lot of you guys to think. Game tray, though, also making a game table under $150. You might remember this one's 250, right? Under 150, so 149.99, you get the game trays table. They're doing a very different take on it. I like some things, I don't like some things. One thing I like is the big rim here. I do like that. Also, it is like made of plastic, which means it'll actually feel really good. So one of the problems with something like this, while great, is people have different preferences and how much rim or lip is there before the well. Too much and you're having to reach too far, too little, and a lot of people get annoyed because it's just this like small rail in your arm versus a nice flat surface that you can rest on, right? So there is that, and this definitely, I think, has a really good length of rim. I think that looks nice, right? I, I, I kind of do that. It also have cup holders built in, both small ones and large ones. I think that's kind of cool. It doesn't look like it has anything else, but it does have the cup holders there, which is kind of nice. You'll notice some interesting things. First of all, it doesn't look as supported as the other one because these um, supports, uh, they're not to each other. So you'll notice they're, they are separate and they only go about halfway. So this will still kind of probably bend in a little bit. Often that can happen. The railing here might help friction wise not do that, but either way, there's less support in the middle there for sure. Whereas this one, you can see that they are attached, I'll scroll down a little bit, are attached to each other. And as I showed all the way up in the middle as well. So the main problem I see with this, this right here, it's a proprietary shape. It's not rectangle, which means none of your neoprene mats, besides the ones that they sell, will fit that without you cutting it. See, it, it, and I, 
obviously on purpose they could have easily have done a square i feel and just put one here or you know you don't know sound like a, it's obviously on purpose of course game traces a game trays game tables right they're not stupid they know design and so they definitely know hey this is now a proprietary neoprene mat solution here that's probably the one thing i don't like they are talking about like um having this available at like stores and stuff like that and i think that could work pretty well especially for the like you know generic backgrounds that they're doing here for some of their their stuff here but either way it is kind of bummer to see anything proprietary like that kind of pop up and that's definitely the case additionally they do have these little bumps here and i've actually never been a fan of that mainly because then if something does spill there it makes it just harder to clean because there's a tiny bit of like well where you can't just like necessarily stuff stuff in there as much personal opinion i guess all right Coming up again, this is in 64 days, so a long time, but this is my first announcement. Probably won't cover it again until it's very close. This is the Night Cage Shrieking Hollow by Smirk and Dagger. Um, this, again, came out of the blue, covered a long time ago. It looks wild and crazy. Like, this should have been, like, launched here in October, I feel, because this is definitely like some horror stuff going on here. Oh my gosh. Okay, now you might recognize that slightly. It's based off this, the Night Cage. Um, this is something I covered a while back because I think it actually looked like a pretty neat little game. So you have these, uh, you essentially have this really dark room and you have uh, this candle that lights your path and you're trying to get different things. You can see uh, there are monsters, stuff like that. A very interesting style game. They actually have this marked here really good. So as you can see, you light up the area around you and as you move forward, the other parts go away and the new parts come. So you're just navigating through this trying to find the different keys and stuff like that to be able to escape. And everybody's trying to do that separately. It sounds like a very interesting game. I love the idea of it. I think the implementation seems kind of good, though maybe potentially a little bit of uh, uh, finicky, right? With constantly adding and removing tiles and stuff. But I like it. I think that's awesome. So, the, and it was super cheap too. So uh, I didn't end up backing it. I kind of wish I had though, um, just because it looks kind of interesting. How this will be different, I'm not exactly sure, but obviously this looks very different. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But either way, this will be coming up soon. You can click the follow link. I'll link down to it in the description below, of course. All right, coming up, we have Come On Minis for Deceased. If you, as you know, that's coming up here soon. That's their next big campaign. They're already releasing stuff. Obviously, this is not the Superman I necessarily want to see. I don't like the whole undead version of enemies though they're not quite undead it's, it's a very interesting thing either way you can see here's his arm down here uh they are doing the sculpted minis and this does look to be very compatible with marvel zombies though i suspect that maybe the core game of this you're still playing as heroes my, that's that's gonna be my assumption and the last one the marbles it was the expansion had spent like 150 dollars to get it during the campaign i'm hoping this one is not the case because the next one they showed is Wonder Woman, who obviously is not zombified here, right? Not anti-life equationed here, whatever you want to call it. Not deceased. Um, so that's good to see. It, it's really good to see that uh, it looks like this is going to be available, if nothing else, at the very beginning. How much more? Don't know. Uh, I, I, again, I'm hoping this is the core box because I think I... Uh, guys, I, I love comics. Read a lot of Marvel read a lot of DC. I, I, I prefer DC when it comes to the characters. And I think Batman obviously has the best rogue gallery of all, followed by Spider-Man and then X-Men, I would say. So it's actually, and then Flash after that. So it really is like DC, the Marvel, Marvel, and then DC. For, uh, but I like their cosmic stuff more too. I like Green Lantern stuff a lot more than all the cosmic stuff in, um, that you'll sometimes see even in like Fantastic Four and stuff like that. But either way, either way, that, that you guys don't care about that. Um, very excited about this, obviously. All right, they also announced, I didn't cover this before, the Cthulhu Dark Providence. This will be coming out, I don't know exactly when, um, but it does look really cool. And as you can tell, it has a lot of Death May Die vibes, right? I mean, so that'll be kind of cool to see. This is actually a third edition of A Study in Emerald. So if you guys have played that, let me know your thoughts on this. I would love to hear him. Next up, Sheol is getting a second edition. And in fact, they're working on fixing bugs, errata, and things that don't work well in the game and creating an expansion that will introduce new features like difficulty settings, new enemies, new missions, etc. So very excited to see that. And they're going to be kind of, they have an official thread on BGG. I'm going to link down to that in the description below as well for you guys so you guys can follow along. Uh, super excited to see what else they can do and how they can improve that game to make it uh, enjoyed by many people. This is a big deal. This is by Red Hook. 
Uh, if you don't know, Red Hook are the video game developers of Darkest Dungeon. And they said, Hello everyone, unfortunately, we learned of Mythic's intent to ask for another contribution for the Darkest Dungeon board game only hours before everyone else. We have been discussing this internally over the last few days and are attempting to get up to speed with Mythic to better understand the situation. One of the most impressive things I feel about this is that they are one of the very few video game companies that actually helped pay to get it delivered when it when it went bad. There's been a lot of IP games and a lot of IP games that have struggled to deliver and never once have we heard of, a, as far as I know, of another video game developer putting money into it. Normally they view this as a money gotten, right? I, you paid for the license. I've already had my pay. I washed my hands of this messy board game that's not delivering now. They didn't do that, and that's kind of interesting. Will they do that again? I, I would doubt it, um, but it is interesting to see that they didn't know about it ahead of time and are only just now discussing it. What worries me about only finding out hours before is you would think Mythic Games would have reached out to them again, if nothing else. If they know that they already paid the first time, I think they paid about 100000 it, it, it just it, it goes to show, in my opinion, that Mythic Games is not pursuing every viable option. For instance, I've mentioned several times to them what the people of Sheol did when they needed to uh, deliver that in Lunar Oak Studios. What they did was essentially a adoption for a pledge. In other words, if you did not want to pay the extra in shipping, but you knew somebody else that did, they could take over your uh, essentially pledge and then they could pay for it and they would update their address. They would handle all that. So now they own it. They are the ones that are getting it. And now you're out of the hook. You essentially got the refund because you sold it to this other other person who's now paying for it. So uh, I've mentioned this several times before to them, and they've never once, as far as I can tell, followed up on it. Each time I say, they're just like, oh, yeah, it's a cool idea. It's like, well, I mean, it, at least it's something to get people out of it. Then you could get a refund. If you could find somebody else to take your Darkest Dungeon thing, you could do that unofficially, of course, but it's a lot better when they're like, oh yeah, we'll handle it. We'll update the email. We'll update the address, all that kind of stuff. We'll handle it. It's just as a better, I think, way to do it when it's officially done. There's a lot of things they could do. So it's kind of interesting they didn't even reach out to that. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Okay, Cool Stuff Inc. is not going to be selling board games anymore, which means they're going to have to uh, change their little meeple stuff here going on. Cool Stuff Inc. is phasing out its board game and RPG selections in both its online and six brick-and-mortar stores as a result of a strategic decision to emphasize on trading card games. <laughs> what are your guys' thoughts on this? Let me know. I think this is stupid. I think right now the trading card games are having a crazy boon from investors more than gamers. I don't think there's necessarily more gamers playing trading card games. I think the market is growing in general for everybody. But I think the idea that I want to make money collecting and selling trading card games has increased and has artificially inflated some of these games with more buyers, but not necessarily more players. And as with any kind of like random boon when it comes to that, thanks to the Pokemon phase and some uh, social media influencers doing stuff like that, like Logan Paul and whatnot, and even Magic the Gathering kind of exploding with all the IP stuff and the, the rarest thing ever and Post Malone buying that with the one ring and all that kind of stuff. Like they've, uh, they've very much been focusing on rarity, on you know, creating these unique things that you can sell and on people buying and collecting them like alpha investments and stuff like that. But the problem is it's it's just as proven as like NFTs when it comes to longevity. In other words, how long before we see a gorilla ape sold for way less than they bought? Haha, ha, Justin Bieber or whatever it was that, that did that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like how many people now are going to be investing in these and buying all these from Cool Stuff Inc. and other companies to have it just kind of all fall apart when it turns out that the only people they're selling to are other people that want to buy it to sell it. And that that's kind of a market that almost cannibalizes itself. I don't know. It'll be interesting to kind of see what, how long this will last, whether or not that is a great strategic decision. But it's interesting that they're saying, nope, board games is not profitable enough. RPG is not profitable enough. We want to get in all in on the trading card game boon. Um, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that, because board games are kind of struggling right now. RPGs, I don't think are as much, but board games, I mean, they're, it's expensive to make, it's expensive to deliver. Uh, and right now, the the economy kind of sucks around all this. So maybe targeting just investors is smart. Now, it, do you do your whole business around that and bank on that and put all your eggs in one basket? I don't think that's a good strategic decision, but obviously they do. Again, let me know your thoughts on this. Are board games and RPGs dying? Because Cool Stuff Inc. doesn't think that it's worthwhile to even be in business with it anymore. 
Comment down below. <laughs> All right, let's do a Storm Thunder. I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm not gonna be digging on anything here. This is just a general warning for other developers. Learn from other developers' mistakes, okay? Don't make your own. Or if you do make your own, make them new ones, at least, that you couldn't have learned otherwise. So here they're talking about testing of Storm Thunder, like years and years after it launched, obviously. It says, now that September is essentially over, we can tell you that testing is definitely not finished. They go on to talk about how Act 5 is going to be the hardest ever because of all the branching paths and stuff like that, and all the decisions and points and whatnot. It's a lot to test. It very much is. This says, I know exactly what people will want, which is a date, and I'm so date adverse at this point after years of being wrong that I'd rather get beaten down in the comments comments than give one. I just want to warn any developer right now that's making a game like Storm Sunder or like Antrospass Odyssey or like any of these games that are very, or, or Oathsworn, any of these very divergent campaign story heavy games, Dawn of Madness comes to mind, to don't launch on Kickstarter unless you're almost done because it is such a big lift. I've talked recently about how expensive it is to make some games versus others. It's way more expensive to make Storm Sunder than it is, like I said, like Blood Rage or something like that, or even Cthulhu Death May Die or anything that has like a very fixed amount of content. It's more replayable. Most Euro style games, much cheaper to make than something that involves a ton of art and story and navigating paths and a, 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 an exponential amount of paths through that campaign that you have to test and analyze and balance and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you need to make sure that there's a power ramp, but that it's fair and that it's not easy at the uh, end and hard in the beginning or vice versa and all that kind of stuff. It takes so much more work and effort and hours and cost to make something like this. And if you don't have it almost all completed, you're going to end up like this more often than not where you're in over your head, you have a ton left to do, and you're so tired of constantly delaying that you don't even want to tell people anymore about it. It just, it, it sucks for everybody involved, the backers, the creators. It no, he's not having fun. I'm not having fun. We all just want our game and we want it done. And so do they, of course. And it just, it, trust me, trust me, trust me, wait. It's not worth it. You might get your funding that you want right now. It's better to almost suffer through like prototyping and stuff like that without getting paid for it versus getting funded and then just having a bunch of angry backers as you delay and test and finalize and redo it. I know Madara famously had an issue with that where they had made their 1.0 and then they realized as they got farther along, oh crap, our math doesn't even work. Like it breaks the system when it comes to like our power ramp and what it looks like there. It just gets silly. A lot of MMOs have a problem with this too. Massive multiplayer online games that live on for years where they constantly need to up and, and you're doing more and more damage until eventually it becomes silly and they have to normalize the numbers afterwards. It's so hard to build a system that works great hour one and hour 120 if it's not a replayable thing, right? If it's a, if it's a progress thing, so hard to do. Don't make their mistake. Lastly, Celestial. I'm not going to cover this too much because I have a dedicated video on this, but it launched and canceled within 24 hours. A ton of people got upset and now people seem to be happier about it now? Question mark? Don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think on this. And obviously I did a whole video, so I'll link down to that down below. Feel free to find out what was so crazy about the Celestial launch and eventual cancellation. Guys, that's it. That's the news video. There's a ton to go over there. I will have another news video right after Essen. So, uh, because I'm going to be playing a lot of games. I'm going to be looking at a lot of games. I'm going to be finding about a lot of games that are coming out. We'll be talking to a lot of developers. It'll be a huge mega news video. So please stay tuned for that. And of course, all the Essen coverage, plus stuff like The Witcher and stuff. Subscribe if you have not. Seriously, it helps the channel out a lot because a lot of sponsors and stuff look at subscriptions, obviously, and it helps you out as well so that you know what's going on in the board gaming world. I was trying to keep you guys informed, of course. Guys, have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye, guys.